matter how big the cat or how different they may look on the outside. They're all specially designed to do one thing. Kill. First, you need to be flexible. This cat will never be a big cat. But he's got a big cat spine that makes him a slick hunter. This is the African wildcat. Cats can move any which way they want because their collarbones are small and free-floating. Their spine twists and arches, giving a cat perfect acrobatic talent. These doves are completely unaware. Until it's too late. Cheetahs also have an advantage when it comes to pursuing prey. A super light frame and an elongated spine that coils and expands. Racing at full speed at 100 kilometers an hour. Their stride measures a massive seven and a half meters. The really big cats throw their weight around too. But sheer sneakiness is their game. Leopards, tigers and jaguars tend to go it alone. But they're perfectly equipped for the task at hand. They stalk like silent masters, shadow stepping towards prey. As each front foot moves forward, a hind one replaces it in the exact same spot. up to 60 kilometers an hour and leap six meters in one bound. Jaguars look a lot like leopards, but they pack a bit more bulk. And their rosettes often have a spot in the center. They live without the company or competition of other big cats. His name means he who kills with one leap, but it should mean he who kills with one bite. The jaguar has the biggest jaw per head size and can kill with one powerful bite to the skull. Prey is stalked, ambushed, and eaten before it has a chance to react. Lions and tigers both run at about 65 kilometers an hour and have huge canines to deliver a death bite. Their skeletons are so similar, it's nearly impossible to tell them apart until you see them on the outside. 
Tigers are the biggest cats on earth. More than three meters long and 300 kilos of one-of-a-kind stripes. They may hunt alone, but that doesn't mean they always go hungry. Lions are the most social of all the big cats, living in prides of up to 40 members. They pretty much do nothing for 20 hours a day, except laze around and sleep. It's the other four you have to worry about. They pool all their strategic talent together to attack in packs. And for them, size doesn't matter. With strength in numbers, even a supersized meal doesn't slow them down. Two sets of powerful muscles, those in the front shoulders and back, and the others in the hind legs, spring the big four forward, either toward or directly onto dinner. But no hunt would be successful without a balanced way to steer. The cat tail is an extension of the spine and makes up about a third of their length. Lions are the only ones to sport a special tassel at the tip. It covers a hard, sharp spine that's separated from the last vertebra of the tail. And when flicked at prey, it can cause serious damage. It also helps them spot other members of the pride through tall grass. Big cats are equipped with an array of powerful weapons. But nothing beats four paws full of claws. The big cats, the tiger, jaguar, lion, and leopard are the stars, and the cheetah gets an honorable mention. They're all masters of the hunt and built for the kill. But where did they get those successful survival skills? It all began about 10,000 years ago with a saber-toothed cat, also known as Smilodon Fatalis. Its name translates as deadly knife tooth. And no wonder. His teeth were 18 centimeters long. He weighed in at more than 270 kilos. With a massive torso, thick legs and a muscular neck. It's thought that saber-tooths hunted in packs, like today's lions. And probably killed by slashing blood vessels in the throat with a powerful bite. Unfortunately, that wasn't good enough. Smilodon died out. But his relatives are still around, flashing their own toothy grins. Success on the battlefield isn't all about teeth, though. Big cats are armed with all kinds of features that help them get the job done.
Their ears swivel around to detect sound and where it's coming from, especially prey. They hear five times better than humans. Lions can hear prey from a kilometer and a half away. But hearing prey is only half the job. Why bother to catch dinner if you can't hold on to it? A mean set of claws, ten in the front, eight in the rear, is essential for all big cat survival. A ligament contracts to keep them disguised inside a set of seemingly harmless paws. If the cat goes into attack mode, the ligament extends. Muscle contractions straighten the bones and out come curved daggers. Cheetah claws are only semi-retractable. Since they always hang out a little, they're not as sharp as the big fours. But they get extra traction on the field, especially on tight turns. And a sharp dew claw hooks prey right out of the air. Mealtime means gulping down some massive chunks of meat. Unlike humans, whose heads are mostly filled with brains, big cats traded intelligence for a supersized jaw. Their jaw muscles are so big, they can only chew vertically. The back teeth cut, while the rest of them stabilize and tear. They only use one side of their mouth at a time, since their jaw doesn't move from side to side. Then a huge pink tongue flops out to help move things along. It's covered with tiny rough spines called papillae. They lap up liquid, scrape meat off bones, and clean up after dinner. But not all hunting expeditions go off without a hitch. Sometimes they make it look easy, but the big four often come up empty-handed. Cheetahs have one of the better track records. They get a meal about 30% of the time. But the problem is keeping it. They lose about 15% of their kills to other predators. Big cats can run fast, but not for great distances. So when endurance is key to a kill, the odds aren't in their favor. Especially when uninvited guests show up. Lions and hyenas are vicious enemies and will fight to the death over food and territory. It's a lot easier to steal someone else's food than to kill it yourself. Sometimes the lions win. Other times, the hyenas. The only thing to keep hyenas at bay is a male lion who's had enough. Even leopards can't eat in peace. 
Hyenas don't them, too. <laughs> but lions are the leopard's number one enemy. And they'll stop at nothing to steal a kill. involved, no one is safe. Being a big cat is anything but easy. Turf, food, rivals. No wonder some days all they want to do is hide. But hiding is one of the things they do best. Lions all have fairly uniform coats, with the exception of the male's bushy manes. Try to spot them in grass of the same tawny color, and it takes a second or two. Sometimes, you never even see them coming. Tiger stripes cause what's called pattern disruption, making it difficult to distinguish the cat's body shape. With so many trees around, their stripes disappear, so they can hide hidden in the shadows. At dawn and dusk, their orange and black fur is almost invisible. Even shaving off all the tiger's fur wouldn't get rid of his stripes. The pattern is tattooed on his skin. Our spotted friends also keep a disguised eye on prey. Just because they have spots doesn't mean they stand out in a crowd. Tall African grass, tree leaves, and leafy jungles help them blend in with their surroundings. They may be difficult to see, but it's likely they can see you. Their eyes are set wide and face forward. Unlike most of their targets, whose eyes face to the side, Most predatory action happens as night falls. Binocular vision helps them judge the distance of prey. Behind a big cat's retina is a layer of reflecting cells. When light enters their eyes, it hits these cells and bounces back, enhancing whatever the cat sees. Humans don't have this specialized eye feature. The big cat's night vision is six times better than ours. But more than a dozen other things help them find prey in the dark. Whiskers. No two sets are alike. As cats creep forward, so do their whiskers, and they alert their owner to potential meals or things standing in the way of them. Bundles of nerves send signals to the brain that something's out there. Then they sit, wait, and watch.
they can determine the size, strength, distance and direction of prey. And if it's injured or weak in any way, it becomes the perfect candidate. Sometimes it's the seemingly harmless that ends up being the most deadly weapon of all. But all cats come equipped with similar weapons. So what happens when a cat instigates a cat fight? Most of the time, cat clashes come down to one thing. Territory. They mark that territory with a potent mix of urine and scents from their anal glands. They sniff out trespassers. Then the fighting begins. Lions will stop at nothing to win a fight. Typically, lions and cheetahs stay out of each other's way, with the cheetah relying on speed to flee the scene. But in one rare instance, some cheetahs are fighting over a female when a male lion sees an opportunity to break up the action. The lion makes a kill with one crushing bite to the female's head. But it's not always a different sort of cat that causes a problem. Big cats won't hesitate to go after their own kind. Leopards throw punches just about anywhere to defend their ground. But there's one other reason that big cats come to blows. Sex. In the world of big cats, things can get a little strange. Especially when it comes to breeding. When it's time to mate, females squirt urine all over the place to let the males know they're ready. The suitors seem to be getting no enjoyment out of this whatsoever. But they will in a minute. And not just for a minute. That grimace is what's called the flamen response. Males hold their mouths open so that whiffs of the female's sexual pheromones can reach an organ on the roof of their mouth. It helps gather information from potential mates. Then, they get to mating. For around 20 seconds at a time, every 20 minutes or so, about 40 times a day, for five or six days. It seems an incredibly rough experience for the females. Big cat penises are barbed to help stimulate ovulation and fertilization.
some females go for the male with the biggest mane. And the darker the better. It's a sign of higher testosterone levels. Others play hard to get. But once the pair is together, they mate up to a hundred times a day. Leopards only come together when they're in heat. And the females will have multiple partners. So the mating game isn't nearly as graceful as it is exhausting. Sometimes the result of all this mating can be the creation of an unexpected cat. These are rare white lions. An unusual genetic trait creates their white coats. The same goes for the white tiger. It's a recessive mutant of the Bengal tiger. None have been seen in the wild for more than 50 years. The theory that white lions and tigers are rare because they can't camouflage themselves may have some truth to it, but it's never been scientifically tested. Big cats can breed between species, but it only happens in captivity and is a pretty rare occurrence. Trap a male lion with a female tiger and you could end up with a liger. It can reach more than three meters long and weigh up to 450 kilos. Ligers lack the gene that keeps growth in check. So it just grows and grows. A male jaguar and a female leopard create a jagulep. A male leopard with a female lion makes a lepon. And a male puma and female leopard combo makes a puma part. For all cats, litters come into the world within about three months. Typically, they range in size from one to eight, with two to four surviving. They feed hungrily on their mother's milk and cling to her side. Until they're a couple of weeks old, they can barely see. But life is far from easy. If a new male enters the picture, he makes a snack of the youngsters. Male lions have no interest in raising someone else's offspring. Killing the cubs puts the females back in heat and gives the males a chance to sire cubs of their own. In this cat-eat-cat -cat world, only one in eight lion cubs makes it to adulthood. Tigers don't have it much better. They also lose entire litters to infanticide. Survival for any big cat cub is a bleak situation. For those that do make it, the free meals only last for so long. Hunting lessons are a vital part of growing up. The little ones watch their mothers, 
and learn how to master the art of the kill. Some are clearly more skilled than others. And it's not something that's learnt overnight. Most big cats are a couple of years old before they take down prey on their own. Two is also the age where they leave to establish their own territories. Once male lions grow manes, they're driven out to find prides of their own. But the majority of females stick with a pride for life. For the most part, the rest of the big cats are loners. They fend for themselves to get the important things in life. Food, territory, and sex. And sometimes it takes a bit of an unorthodox approach. In the continuous quest for food, big cats rely on a few unexpected tricks that can result in some shocking behavior. Despite what they say about cats, tigers don't mind a dip. They're excellent swimmers, and they have to be. Temperatures in India's mangrove swamps can hit 42 degrees Celsius, so it's the only way to cool off. They swim miles from shore for miles at a time, and they can strike from land or sea. A special design lurks behind their ability to swim. Tigers use all four of their legs to run across the jungle or through deep snow. Get in the water and it's a different story. Tigers have webbed feet which act like a pair of giant built-in flippers. Their front legs power through the water, while their back legs help steer them around. They average about 20 miles an hour, which doesn't sound very fast, but look at it this way. It's about four times faster than one of the world's most medaled Olympic swimmers. Jaguars also live watery lives. Fishing in rivers for the obvious. But they also hunt turtles and caiman. if they don't get preyed on first. So it seems an insatiable thirst for blood will always win out over a little water. Another trick the big four use to score food is climbing. We already know what drives lions to do it. Someone else's leftovers. <sighs> Nothing can ground them when it comes to a free meal. But there's also fresh meat in the trees. And today, 
It's the slowest animal on Earth. The sloth. Looks like easy pickings for this hungry cat. Perhaps not. Leopards use the trees for an attack advantage. They get a front row view of their dinner. And the impala are none the wiser. To keep from having to share, they haul huge carcasses, sometimes twice their own weight, up to 15 meters high for safe dining. Even when you do manage to get dinner up a tree, it doesn't always stay there. Just another dog day afternoon for the big cats. Seeing big cats in action, there's no question that they belong in a special category of their own. But these are elusive creatures. And catching them in attack mode can be tricky. So how do they do it? Crews haul tons of expensive camera gear into rainforests, snow, and extreme temperatures just for a glimpse of wildcat life. Thermal imaging and infrared cameras capture shots of the most elusive felines. Like this mountain lion. The secretive ocelot and the Jaguar. They say curiosity killed the cat. This time, it kills the camera. Sometimes, people play mother to orphaned, clouded leopards. Or they cozy up to wild cats as if they were house cats. But keep in mind, these are big cats, and big cats are best left alone. Hey, 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 hey. So what really makes a big cat? And what sets the snow leopard, mountain lion, and cheetah apart from the others? Purring is the motorboat sound that cats make when they're happy, hungry, stressed out, or hurt. To pull it off, all you need are thin vocal cords and hard bones to support the larynx. The bones are set close together, so they can only produce small vibrations. Breathing in or out, the sound is the same, from house cats to big cats, like the cheetah and mountain lion. Get to the big four, and purring becomes a problem. They have thick vocal cords and a flexible larynx. Two membranes vibrate to produce sound when the muscles of the voice box bring them close together. They can purr but only on the exhales. Breathe in, and the purr gets rudely interrupted. This is what separates the big boys from the wannabes. The roar.
The cubs can't do it until they're a couple of years old. But when they do finally come of age, they make themselves heard. Both male and female lions roar, and the males can be heard five miles away. Tiger roars travel up to two miles, and it's enough to scare the daylights out of anyone or anything in the vicinity. Leopards and jaguars have more of a cough than a roar. But it's enough to keep them in the big four. As for all the other wildcats out there, they don't make the cut. In the end, living large is best left to the cats who have mastered it.